Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Sonoma and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Village Big Box. This is a new-ish game from Inca and Marcus Brand published by Eggage Spieler Games. It plays from one to five players in one to two hours. Yeah, so Village, this is actually a game from 2011 that we have never played. Yes. Or we have played it now, but we have not played yes. the version from 2011. Uh, we kind of played a half game of it many years ago, didn't understand anything because it was very early yes. in our gaming travel through games, yes. so it was too heavy for us back then. It was. Uh, and now it's simple because we're pro board gamers. <laughs> <laughs> Village, yeah, so this is not gonna be the the kind of comparison video you might have hoped for because we can't compare them because we do not own the original and we have not played the original. So this is going to be more of a uh, review of, an, yes, uh, of this game, game from yeah. 12 years ago and like telling you a bit about we know what is new in this one. The Village Big Box comes already with all the expansions that was already in the game. It also comes with uh, all the promos the mini expansions that was released and also a new expansion called the marriage expansion so if you are kind of like a collector of all you might want this but you're going to talk a bit about, more about why you might want it and why you might not want it and i'm going to tell you a bit more at the end of the video so don't skip there watch the whole thing because it's going to tell you all the stuff so village is kind of a it's not a worker placement game but it kind of feels like a worker placement game it is a cube removal game yes. you have these cubes that are going to be seated on all these different action places and then you're going to take a cube and then you're going to do the action many of the actions you have to place a worker in a space to be able to do the action so that's why it kind of sometimes you're so used to being a worker placement games so you start by placing a worker someplace and i'm like you have to take a cube because it's a cube removal game and like ah but yeah you're going to do that and you're going to do different actions you're going to get resources you can get different like wagons cows horses and stuff like that you can use those to travel you can use them to sell at the market you can also influence the church and influence the city council and in the expansions you will get people to come to the inn and help you out with different special abilities on cards you will be able to to marry other people randomly it's not like it's a it's it's not a place where you choose who you marry it's just like the two people who are the best at marrying is going to get married yeah. uh yeah so it's it's hopefully not like that most places in the real life and uh, it's better to choose who you marry uh, than in this game. But yeah, that is an expansion and you have the port expansion uh, as well where you will be traveling like, differently than in the base game. So many different parts to go, but, but obviously what you're trying to do is to get the most victory points. I really like the artwork mm -hmm. for this new game and I think it's really pleasant. Yeah. It looks really colorful and nice on the table. Um, but if you're used to the old world, old artwork from the old game, it might be a little, I don't know, personal if you prefer this one on, or the old one. But I think that the iconography for my personal preference is a huge upgrade in clarity and yeah, I, I really prefer this artwork. Yeah, we, we haven't played the old one just so you know, yes. but we, as we said, but we, we looked at pictures and, and for me like... Artwork is always going to be subjective, so it's yes. always going to be like a thing you either like or you don't like. Um, I don't like artwork. No I don't artwork like artwork. Me. Artwork is the worst. I just like white stuff and beige stuff is the best. And it's also really good um, components in this game and yeah. a really nice insert until you place it like vertically on your shelf. Then it will all fall apart. Yeah, I put it into a backpack, like a board game backpack to bring to a board game night. And because it's long, I had to place it this way. And everything was all over the place when we opened it up. The game comes with rule books. More of them. You have the rule book, which is about... 19 pages long but some of it is the solo rules and also there's a lot of ex examples like half of this page is just examples which is great more examples is almost always better because people will have questions and you might think oh nobody wonders this or doesn't understand this but some people will uh, depending on how many rule books you read and how many games you're playing it also has a different rule book for the expansions which i think is fine because when you first learn the game you just want to read this and it might be like overwhelming if this also was in there so i think this is a great way of doing it 
the expansion rulebook is laid out uh, in the same way. Everything is pretty simple and the expansions doesn't add that much. We're going to talk more about that soon. And also you have the kind of reference book, which is um, the promo tiles, all of the different cards, what they do. I don't know why I turned it out this way. And also like a mini expansions of some life goals. So all in all, I think like the rule books are very well laid out and makes it easy to learn the game. There's no play rates? No. But it was fine. A lot of the things that you are doing are described on the board itself. And also you have one action you can do. You can like take a cube and... Yeah, but a different yeah. action. More actions yes. than one, right? Oh, it yeah, would be yeah. a very boring but game. You're doing the same things. The one big question people want to know is, have we played a game? Yes. With players? Yes, we did. And did it take time? Yes, it did. Um, all of the things are true. We Bye. played it with two and three players. Yep. And a three-player game took us about uh, 100 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the two-player games have taken us approximately 40 minutes. And that's both like just a base game and with, with the expansions. And I think that is crazy. Yes. Like, that is short. Right? That is we shorter did, than the box set. We did play fast. I will say, but yeah. I did also like because I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah, but we didn't like rush it. We no, just no. like were efficient and you had a good flow. So this is like, I always talk about these kind of medium games being like an hour, hour, 15 minutes. Yeah. This almost felt too short oh, yeah. with two players. Like, but, but you can easily, we played it like three or four times in a row because it was just like, okay, let's go again. Let's switch out this expansion, let's do this again. Mm. Uh, and it's like one game that you can easily play many times, especially with, with two. Uh, I, I haven't played it with more than three, so I cannot say anything about it. I felt like the two-player game was, wasn't lacking. No, I, uh, I completely agree with you. I think that it, I like that it went so snappy with two and yeah. it's uh, it's some interaction in this game, but interaction, uh, you get that with two as well. Like yeah. the grabbing yeah, all yeah. the different cubes. Yeah. I think of course, like um, especially the new expansion, we'll talk about it more later, yes. I think is better with more people and would be even better if you get that fourth person in there. Uh, but more about that later in the review. We're not going to talk like super long about the gameplay, I think, because this game has probably been reviewed 16,000 times and the base things of the game hasn't changed. But we're going to talk about it anyways because it's new to us and it is might be new to you. So you don't have to go and look at other videos because <laughs> who needs other videos when you have Norwegian people? Oh, yeah. So first of all, like the cube removing thing, Yes. it feels different. Still, I haven't seen a lot of games doing it in that way. No, it's it's cool that it feels fresh even after like 10 plus years yep. later. And I, I like the mechanism of taking a cube. Um, it, it shows you how many times that action can be done. Yes. It's, it is a way to get around that. Uh, but it also um, might be a play cube that makes you lose some time. Mm -hmm. It can be like uh, a different color that you need for a specific Yeah, things. because that's important. I, I was just thinking now, we haven't yes. talked about that. The cubes about aren't that. just cubes. Yes. The cubes you also need for different actions yeah. so what action you take is it might also be like okay i don't need this action now but i need that cube so mm -hmm. that later when i do that action i don't have to pay the time i don't need a person i can just get that resource but i need to take that cube first mm -hmm. and do that action maybe in a, in a different way so it changes up the way you think about choosing the actions yes, back to you every single cube has to be taken so maybe yeah. nobody wants to go to the road action i don't know what it's called the, the one action and then you're ending up like just going there to take cubes or going there spending time because it has to be done and also because every cube has to be taken you always have to be the lookout for lion Neeson so it doesn't come and take you back <laughs> that is a very important part of this game as yeah, well yes we struggle a lot uh, with that actually <laughs> he's always like calling yes, and be yeah. like well, I, i'm gonna hunt you down it's gonna be a problem because we take all these cubes <laughs> but, but yeah. i really like the time mechanism yes. in this game also back to the actual yes, review the gameplay <laughs> Because sometimes you don't want to spend time because that makes your people die faster. But then you get points for people dying in specific places, it's specific kind of, jobs. <laughs> it's kind of like... If you die first, that's good. When you good. look at it that way, it looks kind of weird. But thematically, it makes sense. Yeah. Like you have these people, the first generation, like you have meeples with numbers on them. 
and the beginning and you have the first generation and you get to the second generation and the third and the fourth and when somebody dies you always have to choose somebody with the lowest number so and then you try to, as you said to have them die at nice times and yes. die before other people die so that they get talked about in this chronicle that you that looks really yeah, nice because uh, sometimes you're like oh I want him to die because then I get points for him so I have to make him die before your people are dying. <laughs> this sounds so weird to talk about. But uh, it is pretty weird. But uh, at some points in this game, I've been like, but oh, I need to do that action more. I can't. I have to keep him alive somehow a little bit more. <laughs> and also, I I really like the fact that uh, in in it might feel in this game like oh I can't let the people die. It could have been that way. Yes. But this game you could actually kind of also rush it if you wanna. Yeah. And that might be a valid strategy depending on what the other people are doing. Yeah, because that is what we didn't talk about at the playtime and player count. It's not a fixed length of the game. No. Nope. The players are um, um, controlling when yeah. the game ends, and it's you can rush power. it or you can be very conservative. Yeah, but kind of like all the games we played lost three rounds yes uh in the three player game and the two player games was three rounds in in some time during round three all the people died and you you ended up like there was a meteor yes and it exploded it was not that's not a new expansion the meteor expansion now but so maybe like, like Jorah's Mosque expansion there's yeah, a moon, the moon coming down yes but Back to the review. I, yeah, I like that the expansion in itself doesn't add a lot of length. Yes. I, I didn't even feel like they added a, a length at all they, to no, this they, game. They really like... They're like Whoa. We said like they took 40 minutes. The truth, when we played two players, it took around 50 and uh, between 35 and 50 minutes. Yeah. When we played with like almost everything, it took like 50. Okay, so it And when we like played the base game, I will say it, if you play with all expansions, it might add like 12 to 15 minutes. And it adds a little uh, more complexity because you have more choices. Uh, but it's it feels very natural with the game. Yeah. Like when we took all the expansions away, I was like, oh, well, that's weird. We haven't gotten any people from the inn. Oh, it isn't in the game right now. It isn't so. in the game. Huh. Uh, but I feel like there's many paths to victory in this game. Yeah. And especially when you're playing with multiple expansions, you have to focus on something yeah. and it's not like you have to do this to win mm -hmm. you can easily ignore parts of the game and do your thing but you have to be in it to win it yes, yes. i really like the expansions like for example i would say uh, and of course the big box adds to a lot of variability because there's many different ways to play it you can play it like if you play the port expansion you change the whole board so the whole like travel there's a travel mechanism which uh, I feel like it's kind of meh in the in the in the the, the um, base game. Uh, the port expansion I really enjoy. It adds like a different layer to that. But you could also not just just not do it, which I, I really like. Mm, but it adds like the variability in this game. I feel like is a lot of these different uh, ways to manipulate the, or use the different expansions. Mm -hmm. And also, then I can I can basically say at the beginning of the game, oh. I'm not going to do this part of the game this time. I yeah. just focus on something else. Yes. Another one I really like, which I don't know where is from, like if it's a promo or something, is the Life Goals expansion. Oh yeah, that is nice. Because I'm always a fan of getting these player goals. Mm. And here you get like a silver and a gold goal, which one of them is going to be like having these specific resources mm -hmm. and the other one is being like being in this specific situation yeah like for example one can be have four in cards in your hand at the same time yes or have three people in the church and all on the top for three spaces like different things like this yes and the times we play with that i you a couple of times i was like okay this is the first one i'm gonna do i'm just gonna get to that one and then I'm going to see like, oh, because I, I'm getting these resources now, I have them and then I can spend them yes. and Gives turn my direction. strategy throughout yeah. in that way, which I, I really enjoy. Yeah, the marriage expansion is the uh, new thing to this uh, yeah. game and it also feels like the most involving um, expansion. Yeah. It changes up the game like the most. Uh, but still, very little, still which I like. Still very little. Uh, you're basically taking a cube, placing a person in the marriage 
I want to say Q. Yes. I want to get married. I'm going to send this Q. Hope somebody comes to marry me. Yes, it feels like that. You know that there's going to be like a, a, a no no NPC like coming to marry you. There might be. Might not always. Oh, not always. You okay. know, remember it happened one time and I I, I didn't oh, get married. Oh yes, you didn't get married. I was crying oh, that and was so everybody sad. was sad. Yes, uh, but well, chances are uh, there that you will be married, even if yes. nobody else <laughs> goes there. And nobody knows a lot about this expansion, so I'm going to explain how it works. Oh yeah, that's great. <laughs> People are like, what is this marriage you're talking about? Instead of talking no, about. No, no, but you were getting into it, and then we yeah. started talking about all the weird stuff. So I'm just going to do like a super short one, if that's okay with you. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So you have this track. It is basically, I think it's six spaces big. And the higher on the track, where you play, just that you take the cube and you place your person on it. The higher on the track, the better bonus you get, but the less chance of you getting married is there. So you're gonna place these, and then the four spaces in the middle has a color on them. And then in, after the mass at the end of the round, you're gonna roll a four-sided die, and then you're gonna put a, as I said, an NPC, a pink little maple in a space that matches with that color. If there is already somebody there, you're not gonna place them. And then after that, the two lowest numbered spaces are getting married. So as I said, random people getting married to random people. Oh, yeah. uh, and if you are playing, as I said, we, we, we mentioned earlier, this might be better with more players. We haven't tried it. But with four and five players, there are going to be two couples getting married. Sounds so good. when you play it now, when, when two or three players, it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to place on the lowest space. I get no bonus, but I'm a 100% sure... I'm gonna get married. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also place like on the second lowest because the lowest cannot be taken over by a yeah. a NPC uh, uh, to to then get a small bonus, or you could like risk it and be like, oh, but I'd rather have this bonus because you get like a compensation if you don't get married. So you're gonna roll that, and then the lowest two are gonna get married, and then the person that's lowest on the queue, all those two, is gonna choose which where they wanna work. I guess. Yeah. Do they want to work at a bakery or a uh, smithy? And you go there and then you get some of these new resources, which is the bread and the tools. The bread you can use either to move cheaper on the church track, or you can actually, and it's pretty cool, you can place it under a person to basically make him live longer. Yeah. Because let's say you have a, a one, a generation one meeple, and you really want him to survive, and then, but he's the last one, the, the last one you have, and then he has to die. You can place a bread under him, and now he's a two. So then yeah. you can make the two die instead. Uh -huh. And the tool is basically you can use it for doubling the production in one of the stalls. So if I were to go and get two beer, I can use that and get four beer instead. Lastly, after the next round, when somebody else is going to move into the house, you move into like a little townhouse, and then you're going to produce a baby every round, so you're going to get a new worker every round as long as nobody in that couple dies. The other part of the expansion, I know this wasn't that short, but this is the thing Hi. people want to know about most, yes. I'm guessing, so um, it makes sense to spend a lot of time on a bit time of it. Uh, do you want to explain the other action or should no, I do it? do it. Yes. yes. Uh, I've just been speaking for a couple of minutes, so I was going to ask you to, to be nice. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, the other action is a smuggler action. I don't know why it's called that. Maybe he's a bad man. Yeah, because that is where I stopped. It stopped for me because I couldn't explain why you do the smuggling. You have action. marrying and then smuggling, smuggling things. The smuggling action is basically kind of a um, auxiliary action. It feels like oh, you yeah. take a cube from it and then you have three choices. You can sell tools or bread. For two points each. That was the strategy I did in like one of the nice. games we played. I got yeah. like loads of bread and I sold everything for like 12 points, which is quite a lot when you get like 70. Um, you can also just take two different cubes. And the last thing you can do is to pay a cube and then sell to a market stall that is in the unavailable uh, part of the market, yeah. which is really nice. So that is basically the marriage action. Yes. What did we talk about before that? You spoke about the marriage stuff. Let's see, What do you like the marriage action? Yeah, I do. The marriage I, I like that you get compensated even if you don't get married. <coughs> because I didn't explain that. Explain yes, that, please. Uh, you get a, like, uh, yeah, one bread or one two. But you have to pay you, for it. You have to pay for it. Uh, the positive thing about that is you get your dude back and can use it. Yes. Uh, so if you're getting married, your dude gets stuck there until he dies. Like but, in real life. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, so I, I enjoy it, yeah. but it also is a part of the game that you can ignore. Yeah, and like everything else. I like everything else. But I feel like it adds like another layer, and I would say, especially if you play with four players, yes. it's going to be even better. It feels, feels like. like that. So yeah, let's talk a bit about the weight. And who is it for? If you, like us, haven't played Village before and always wanted to, uh -huh. or just based on our review, you feel, feel like you should check it out, mm -hmm. I think this game is for you. Yes, it might also be for you if you like Village, yes. the, the board game, the board game. and you have not played any of the expansions. And you, because they're mostly out of print and they're probably pretty expensive, so this is like a great way to get everything at once. You get the promos and all of that. Uh, I will say, if you own everything already, or if you don't care about like the life goals expansion and the promos, the question then is, of course, do you need this just to get the marriage expansion? And it's a hard thing to answer because I would, I would probably say for me, that would be a no. If yeah. I already owned everything, because we don't play games enough. But like, if Village is your favorite game, yes, and you play it all the time, and you already played it like a hundred times with all the different stuff, then you might want to get it, and, and probably you can then sell the original for maybe the same price that you pay buy this for. Um, but it's so hard to answer that question because it, is there value here? Is the big question, of course, always mm. because board games cost money, and that is kind of hard question to answer. Yes, I feel like it really depends on how much you like Village yeah. from the get-go. Yeah. Uh, the marriage expansion will not take Village from being like the mid-tier to like your top one of all time. No, no. It's more of what you already hopefully like. Yeah. So you have to decide for yourself if you want to uh, spend all this money just to get the marriage expansion if you mm -hmm. have all the other stuff. But I feel like the and the base game and the expansions that already are there are very good and you don't need the marriage expansion. If you already own everything, yes. of course. Uh, but if you're gonna go out and get the game now, then this is obviously the choice to go with yeah. because it's available yes. and you get everything. Also, it's a medium game, I yes. would say. It has some nice interaction yes. and the expansions are very simple to add in, which I really enjoy. I agree. I, I was basically setting it up and the player we were going to play with, he already played Village and he was like, oh, can we try the marriage expansion? I was like, okay, let's read that because that's the longest rule book and there was four pages. And now uh, I was like, oh, but everything is kind of simple and that's the most uh, hard one to implement. Uh, so everything is kind of like, it's more like, um, it sounds more bad to say this, but like it's more of the same, not yeah. in a bad way, mm -hmm. but in a very simple way. Like all of the expansions basically add two actions mm -hmm. and it makes it very, very uh, it makes it to a variability, so that is a good thing. With a more rambling comes more stuff, so let's go to final thoughts. But before the final thoughts, if you enjoyed us talking about this game and other games you might have heard us talk about before, because we haven't made other videos, you can check them out. And then there is something you can do to help us out in a big, big way, and that is by giving us a victory point. And how do you do that? So you know, I'm super ready with a tutorial. Yes, we get victory points when you click that subscribe button down there. You can even click the bell to get notifications every time we post a new video. You can also give us like a coin if you like or subscribe. We really appreciate that as well. Awesome. So are you ready for some final thoughts? Yes. You can start because you are you. I can start. I really can't explain why I didn't enjoy the first time we played Village, like ten half the time, yeah. ten years ago. But because now I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy how simple the mechanisms are. Like the core mechanism is just take a cube and do the action. Yeah. And especially with two players, the playtime was like you get a lot of game in a short amount of time yeah and i really appreciate this game for like um yeah do you want to play like a fast game simple game okay what which expansions do we want mm -hmm. to add feels very easy to get to the table yeah and also i really love the new looks of the game and overall it feels very pleasant to sit down and play it i have lost all of the times that we played it so there's something that i'm not quite getting and it's always that um, you can either really enjoy a player controlled ending mm -hmm. or you can uh, like not like it a lot and I'm like in the latter category a little bit but I still really enjoy it I think it's a 7.5 from me cool I like Willage a lot I think that 
it feels like a classic Euro game, but still it feels like it's fresh and it's kind of fascinating to play a game from 2011 where most of the mechanisms are like, oh, we haven't seen this in many games before. Why haven't people did and done anything with this in 10 years? And I think like it still stands on its own, on its own two feet. I agree with you that all the expansions makes it a variability, the high variability, and it has a big range of player counts. It worked very well with the player counts we have played, and I, I just have been enjoying my time with the game, and it's one that I wouldn't be sad to play many more times. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. As you know, it's not like an 8 out of 8, for example. It's yeah, 8 out of 9.5. Uh, but it's a great game that I am happy to own. And if anything in this video, hopefully it made you understand if this game might be for you or not. And that is the end of this video. I'm Johannes. I'm Sunwa. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye-bye.